Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. <clears throat> As many of you may know, part of my seminary education included a year of internship working in a congregation. The congregation I was assigned to was in western Nebraska, and so my new bride and I headed off 1,500 miles away from anyone we knew into a culture we had never experienced before and with more snow than we had ever considered before. But it was also a fascinating year, and we took advantage of our opportunity to see and experience as much of life there as we could. For example, I've been to rodeos here, but let me tell you, they pale in comparison to the real thing they have out there. Near us <clears throat> was the largest railroad hump yard in the world, and we were able to see how they make up trains and link them together. I saw the fort where the last cavalry unit with horses was based, and the spot where Crazy Horse was killed. We saw an original Pony Express station and mailed a letter there. We toured a sod house and visited the home of Buffalo Bill. But all of that paled in comparison to Ash Hollow. You see, the area we were in in Nebraska was right along the Oregon Trail. The thing was that all the way across the prairie, there were no trees for wood for your campfires or for shade. But in the western part of Nebraska, there was a hollow with trees and water. The Native Americans had used it for centuries, and it quickly became a stopping place along the Oregon Trail for weary travelers to rest, collect some wood, and to prepare for the long journey over the Rocky Mountains. It was an interesting place to visit, and even more so because of Windless Hill. You see, in order to get down into Ash Hollow, the settlers had to navigate a steep hill with their loaded wagons. On top of the hill, they had built a windlass, or a winch-type device, that they would attach to a wagon with a rope, and then help lower the wagon down under the control safely to the bottom. But here's the thing. In that spot, and in a few others, you can still see the wagon ruts from all those wagons that traveled the Oregon Trail. It's striking to stare at those wagon ruts in that hill. You can almost hear the groans and creaks of the wagons, the snorts of the horses, the cries of the men as they made their way down that slope. You can also sense their hopes of a brighter future before them their indomitable spirit to seek their fortune no matter the risk, the courage it took to brave the dangers. You stand there and you know all that, all that was real right here. This week, following the Sunday when we commemorate Jesus' baptism, we are looking together at one of the prayers from the baptism service, commonly known as the Flood Prayer. This prayer goes through the Bible and highlights several times when water and salvation are connected together. One of those events was Moses and the people passing through the divided waters of the Red Sea. The prayer says, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. Now, I'm sure it doesn't take any more than that brief part of a sentence to bring the whole story to our minds. We know how God delivered the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt and how they passed through the waters, so I don't need to go over all that here. What I do need to mention is that from time to time, from that time onward, and even today, this event became and has remained the seminal event of salvation in, in, in Israel's history. Whenever anyone might scoff about God and say, God is a figment of your imagination. When has your God ever done anything specific for you? They would quickly look back and say, right here, in this event, God entered into our history 
and acted to save us. It's a vital point. They have a time when God entered human history, human conditions, and did something to change them. We may scoff at other gods who haven't done that, but our God did. Our baptism is another of those times. It is awe-filled and humbling to take part in a baptism and to know that as we put water on this person's head, God is entering history again and acting right here among us. God is making that person God's child. Amid the sounds of coos and bubbles and water pouring and even babies crying, God is right here making us God's own. You stand there and you know all of it is real, right here and forever. Thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God.